Hi, I'm Dr. Jason J. Campbell, and I want to thank you for taking the time to watch my videos. In this video, I'm going to do a very, very cursory introduction to predicate logic. Um, I browsed YouTube, and there are actually a lot of good videos on predicate, predicate logic. Um, so I'm not going to go through um, symbolization of uh, paragraphs or sentences, propositions. I'm not going to go through any of that because there are already uh, very good videos on YouTube demonstrating how to symbolize you know, various propositions, various claims, and so on. So I'm not going to do that. What I am going to do is give you uh, a theoretical understanding of predicate logic in this video, and in subsequent videos I'll show you how to go about um, sort of the rules of deduction in, in, um, in predicate logic. Um, as far as the symbolization and how the quantifiers relate to um, particular words in a sentence. I'm not going to go through that again because I think that um, other YouTube contributors have, have, have done a good job. So, um, in an attempt to avoid redundancy in videos, I will keep this sort of very, very general. I'll give you more of a theoretical understanding of predicate logic. And for me, if I can get this thing open, for me the most important thing in any analysis of, of logic, any analysis of math, is to understand how to read what is displayed. That's the most important thing. In my videos on symbolic logic, in my videos uh, of modal logic, I always uh, made sure to take the time to explain how to read the the, uh, the mathematical claim or the mathematical statement. Right? It's important to understand how to read it, um, what, what each of the symbols means. Uh, and again, that's what I'm going to do in this video. Um, so with that, this is a, a very cursory uh, introduction to predicate logic. Alright, All right. Um, the first thing to recognize in predicate logic, I'm going to give you some of the terms, some of the concepts, again, very extremely general introduction, but I think this will solidify uh, an understanding of predi predicate logic, so as the videos progress and um, the discussion gets more and more complicated, in scare quotes, um, that you'll have a very solid understanding of the functions and the names of each component part. Um, the first term, so this is like, I, I guess I could label this uh, definitions. All right, these are definitions. Um, the first term or definition is what's known as an individual constant, right? First one is an individual, an individual constant. This is also known as, an individual constant is synonymous, it's also known as uh, a subject term. All right. Some authors of logic texts will call, them, call it an individual constant, some will call it subject term. Individual constants and subject terms are uh, interchangeable. Um, individual constant subject terms are always lowercase. They're always lowercase, and they're identified by subscripts. If I can write that right, I D E. Identified by subscripts, lowercase a through lowercase w. Actually, I should make it look like a lowercase, right? Um, so, an individual constant or a subject term, basically the same thing. Um, it's written in lowercase, and it's identified by a subscript beneath the, the, the script, a subscript, small a, through small w. Just sort of keep that in mind. Number two. The last thing is what's known as a property. A property, or it's also known as a predicate term. A property... Um, and this is also known as a predicate term. Um, and a predicate term property, very simply, is identified by uppercase letters, right? Identified by uh, uppercase letters. Okay. Is identified by um, uppercase letters. A proposition 
is the next part. So the first part is an individual constant, and I'm going to symbolize this in a second. I just want you to have the, the, I, the understanding of the function. An individual constant is also known as a subject term. We have a property, which is also known as a predicate term. And then the last is a proposition. And a proposition is symbolized by a, um, we're going to take the predicate term, or the property, and add it to the subject term. C T. The subject term, the subject term, or the individual constant, right? Um, so I'm going to go back to an example that I used uh, in a previous video um, in discussing um, uh, Salvor Zizek's uh, analysis of Rumsfeld's knowledge. Um, so imagine, for example, we wanted to say that Rumsfeld has knowledge. We want to symbolize Rumsfeld's having of knowledge, right? Rumsfeld, we made the claim Rumsfeld has knowledge. Um, we see that Rumsfeld as the subject, right? Rumsfeld as the subject. We're going to represent Rumsfeld by an individual constant, right? So we would technically represent it by a lowercase r, right? So we're going to represent Rumsfeld by a lowercase r, and this lowercase r is the individual constant. Or, as we've said, the subject term. Okay. Alright. Um, remember, a proposition is a predicate term plus a subject term. So, so far we have the subject term, right? So, we've done that. The next thing that we need is the predicate term. Um, knowing, having this knowledge, having knowledge, knowledge is a property that this subject is said to have, right? Rumsfeld is said to have this property knowledge, right? Um, so we are saying that Rumsfeld has some particular property. What is that property that he has? The property that he has is knowledge. So we symbolize that property of having knowledge as an uppercase K, right? Um, and this becomes the property or the predicate term. So this is the predicate T R M or the uh, property. So we have two component parts in this symbolization. Very simple symbolization. We have a K and a subscript lowercase r. The K is representative of a predicate term. Rumsfeld, the subject, is said to have this property. And we write that by uppercase K, lowercase r. Pretty simple. Um, now, imagine that we wanted to say uh, any of the following claims. Let's say we wanted to say Peter has knowledge, Mary has knowledge, Tim has knowledge, Bill ha has knowledge. All of those would be symbolized in similar manners, right? You would say uh, Peter has knowledge, right? And actually, let me write that bigger. We would say that Peter, lowercase p, Peter has knowledge. We could say that Mary has knowledge. We could say that Tim has knowledge. We could say that Bill has knowledge. Right? All of these would be um, the subject term followed by the predicate term. Subject Mary, predicate having knowledge. Subject Tim, predicate having knowledge. Subject Bill, predicate having knowledge. And so on and so on and so on and so on. Now the question arises, and I'll erase that. Now the question that arises is, what if you have two subjects with exactly the same variable? So for example, um, if we have two subjects, right, two individual constants, um, and they have the same variable, for example, we want to say that Alice, Alice has knowledge, K-N-O-W-L-E, Alice has knowledge, and we want to say that uh, uh, Andrew, Andrew has knowledge. The different conventions used, what we would do is, that obviously we see that we're going to be using both A's, right? It's not like Bill and Tim and Mary where they're different um, um, individual uh, constants, 
the constant is going to be the same. The individual constant is go both going to be in A. So to make sure that we differentiate between um, Alice and uh, Andrew, what you can do is say Alice is A subscript 1, Andrew is A subscript 2. That's one of the, the ways of making differentiations, right? So in an event where your individual constant is the same, right? you have two A's, for example, what you can do to make a differentiation between these two is to say that you know you're going to represent Alice by um, you're going to represent Alice by a one and you're going to represent Andrew by a two and so on and so on. It's just a way of making sure that you don't uh, confuse the the symbolization at all. So we understand what the predicate term is. We understand what the we understand. Can I need to turn this off? Sorry. We understand uh, what the predicate term is. We understand what the um, individual constant is. We recognize we can, how we symbolize multiple individual constants, um, all having the same property, the property in this case being knowledge. We also recognize how to symbolize um, similar constants, uh, um, similar individual uh, constants, where um, two subjects having the same letter, A and A, can be differentiated, right? K um, subscript A, so we say Alice has knowledge, or Andrew has knowledge, and so on. Okay, so that's, again, just very, very, very basic, very, very general. Um, the next thing that we need to recognize is that um, insofar as we're talking about a specific, right, insofar as we're talking about a specific subject within the, the confines of us giving variables a one two three all the way to w, um, we can talk about um, just any given, not a particular right, not a particular subject, but any given subject in a state of affairs, um, and this is known as the fourth term. This is known as a propositional propositional a propositional function, right? propositional function. And a propositional function is, or are, all individual constants, right, all individual constants with the same property, right? So we can sort of just talk about all individual constants with the same property as, in this example, uh, it would be k, and then we'd have a sub x, right? That subscript x um, has uh, a particular classification, and I'll talk about this in a second. Right? Um, so what we would just say is, instead of saying that um, Lumsfeld has knowledge, or Alice has knowledge, or Mary has knowledge, or Tim has knowledge, or Bob has knowledge, we would just say that X has knowledge, right? X has knowledge of dot, 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 right? So when we see A through W um, as uh, an individual constant associated with uh, a predicate term, then we know we're talking about, you know, Rumsfeld's knowledge or Mary's knowledge or Tim's knowledge or Bob's knowledge. When we just see an X instead of an individual constant between A and W, we recognize we're just talking about the having of knowledge, right? X is said to have knowledge. And the way that we would read this is that X has K-N-O-W-L-E. We would say that X has knowledge, right? X, whoever X might be, has knowledge. Um, this X then, right, this X then is classified with technical terms. It's called, a, it's called an individual variable. It, it's a representation of the, the individual V A R I A. Right? It's a representation of an individual variable, and it's, it's basically nothing more than a placeholder, right? It holds a place in the example of Rumsfeld of R, right? It can hold a place of, you know, anything between A and W, right? It's an individual um, uh, variable. It's a placeholder. 